Hi there, hope you're having a pleasant day wherever you may be. Today I find myself at a place that Tony the Tiger would approve of. I'm at Great Sand Dunes National Park in Southern Colorado. Great Sand Dunes National Park is located about 30 or so miles from the town of Alamosa in Southern Colorado. So what exactly are the Great Sand Dunes? Well, they're called that because these are the tallest sand dunes in North America, topping out at about 750 feet. And that is due to the unique conditions of the area that allow them to get as tall as they do. The dunes are located in the San Luis Valley, which is a large basin sandwiched between the San Juan Mountains to the west and the Sangre de Cristo Mountains to the east. Now, over the years, weathering and erosion have caused a lot of the sediment from the San Juan Mountains to make its way into the valley, which used to have a large prehistoric lake, uh, Lake Alamosa. Um, that lake eventually dried up, and the prevailing winds from the southwest pushed a lot of that lighter, finer sediment uh, up toward the Sangre de Cristo Mountains. Now, there's a little pocket in the Sangre de Cristo Mountains um, where the sediment collected and there's also three mountain passes nearby the Mosca, Madrano and Music Passes where winds from storms would come in the opposite direction and sort of oppose those prevailing winds causing the sand to collect here and those opposing forces cause it to pile up and it, they kind of equal each other out and that's why you get these really really tall dunes here in this particular area. Now, in addition to that, the watershed from the Sangre de Cristo Mountains in the form of Madano Creek, and there's another creek nearby that flows down from the mountains, brings in sediment in that direction as well, sort of uh, replenishing the dunes in that sense. What's really interesting is that one would reasonably think that because the dunes are sort of created and at the whim of the winds, that these, these would be different every time you visited, but no, that's actually not the case. Uh, the larger main dunes really don't change shape that much. As a matter of fact, uh, in the brochure, there's a picture from 1873 and one from 2011, and you can see the same uh, ridges uh, in the two pictures from uh, over a hundred and some odd years apart. So no, in the large part, the dunes stay pretty much intact. The dune field covers over 30 square miles and only represents about 11% of the overall sand system here, which is over 330 square miles, uh, which includes the watershed from the nearby mountains, uh, an area known as a sand sheet where sand is kind of bedded down by vegetation, and another area known as a capca, um, which has to do with uh, the groundwater and kind of making it sort of marshy. So apparently there's three different types of sand found here, and to be honest, I probably wouldn't have spotted them on my own. One is a darker, finer sand, which comes from the San Juan Mountains, uh, upwards of 50 to 60 miles away. And it had to be finer because the journey kind of pummeled it, and it had to be light enough for the wind to carry as well. The other two are a little coarser, uh, one's a little lighter and one's more of a blackish, and those come from the nearby Sangre de Cristo Mountains. Now they came mostly by water um, and they didn't have to travel nearly as far, so that's why they're a little coarser. Apparently the black one is also very magnetic, and if you put a compass next to it, apparently it makes it go kind of haywire. As far as visiting here, it's about 20-30 miles from Alamosa, Colorado. Um, getting here is pretty straightforward, uh, there's a visitor's center. Um, there's a little trail at the visitor center, but uh, most of the little kiosks are all worn away, so uh, don't be too, uh, don't expect too much from learning on that one. <laughs> the main draw seems to be the dune field, which is about half a mile away. There's a parking lot, um, and uh, once you get uh, out, you have to cross Madano Creek, which it's the end of summer, so it's dry, but I think during uh, spring and early summer, there actually is water flowing. This is Madano Creek that you have to cross. Um, I don't think it's treacherous, but uh, just keep that in mind. It's about a quarter mile to get to the dunes sort of proper and start climbing. Now you can climb up the dunes in any way, shape, or form that you want. Um, they say walking along the ridges is the easiest, um, but it does get pretty steep at times and uh, it is very, very challenging. All right.
as you're climbing up, it doesn't feel like you're making a lot of progress. But then when you look back and realize how far you've gone from the parking lot, you realize, okay, I've done a little work, <laughs> but still. Made it to the top. Going down is significantly easier from a breathing and leg strength standpoint. However, I feel like don't get too caught up in going down fast because I feel like sometimes the sand is a little more packed in and you're expecting a soft one and you hit like a hard one. I feel like it could do some damage. So, you know, go down at a brisk pace, but take it easy. Now, if you do decide to hike to the top of the dunes or some portion thereof, um, they say walking along the ridge lines is easier. Um, you'll probably find a lot of footprints to follow and or people. Um, and it is steep and sandy and very tough. <laughs> I would also recommend starting early. Um, get it out of the way in the morning before it gets warm. The sand starts to heat up, the air temperature gets to heat up. And don't forget you're at elevation too. You're at like 7,500 feet. So um, it's easy to lose your breath and combine that with the sand, the steepness, the height. It's a challenge. <laughs> but the view from the top is amazing. If climbing to the top is not your thing and you wanna just treat this like a beach, go right ahead. I saw plenty of people just uh, plopping a chair down and sitting in the sand like they would uh, at any normal beach. Um, and if you wanna be a little more active, um, you could bring a sled. Uh, I saw tons and tons of people with sleds that I think they might have rented from Alamosa. Now these sleds were slightly different from the ones I remember seeing at White Sands. The other one, the ones at White Sands were kind of rounded and you sat in. Um, these ones, people sat on them, but they were more like a skateboard without wheels. Um, and some people kind of rode them like surfboards. Um, so a different style. I'm not sure if it's because of the type of sand or just the, you know, people that are renting them. I'm not sure. Speaking of white sands, I'm just going to throw it out there that dunes of any color are just mesmerizing. They're just so peaceful to look at. Really awesome. However, I'll compare and contrast a little bit. These are much taller and very impressive in that regard. Um, the one drawback is that everybody kind of comes from the same parking lot. So everyone kind of walks in mass and goes to the same ridges and walks and things like that. So. Um, you never really get that sense of solitude where white sands, you have tons of opportunities to pull over and explore a dune and feel like you have the place all to yourself. You don't quite have that here. So if I had to give the nod in that regard, white sands wins. But like I said, still impressive, still beautiful, still worth a visit, not knocking this place in the least. Now there is more to the park and uh, adjoining nature reserve. Um, that you can explore but like I said the dune field seems to be the main draw I would venture a guess that the views uh, either early in the morning or near uh, sunset are probably pretty spectacular with those shadows like midday still cool but I think shadows would really add to it well that does it for this one thanks for joining me on this trip to great sand dunes national park hope you found it informative hope you found it entertaining and maybe it'll encourage you to come check it out yourself with that said I guess I'll see you on the next one mm -hmm.